shoemaking. I love this part of shoemaking because it's so quick and so easy. Um, I feel like you can just start a pair and have them finished within an hour, maybe even less, depending on how simple your design is. So I really love doing sandals just because it's that instant gratification. Let's dive straight in. I am going to start by just showing you what I've got here. I have two pre-cut leather insoles. They are cut out of three and a half mil thick veg tan leather. And then you could also use these for your soles as well, but I'm going to use EVA foam, a dense EVA foam for my soles. This is five mil thick. Um, I just really love EVA foam as soles because it's super dense, which means it doesn't wear away too quickly when you walk on it, but also it's kind of squishy, so it's really comfortable. So that's why I'm going to do a combination of these, but you can use literally whatever you like, really. You can use leather, EVA. You can use EVA for your insoles as well, um, but this is what I'm going to start with. If you don't have pre-cut ones like this, um, you just have like a big sheet of leather, we are going to make a pattern so that you can see how easy it is. And then over here I've got my straps. So I also use a veg tan leather for my straps. This is like two mil thick, if that. It doesn't really have a stretch though, that's the most important thing. I just find these, uh, this leather really great for sandal straps because you don't have to line it, you don't have to stitch it. Um, this kind of leather really molds beautifully to your foot and it just ages really well. This is the kind of leather you see in traditional like Greek sandals, that kind of thing. So even though they can feel a little bit stiff when you have just finished the sandals, they really do soften up over time and become the most comfy sandals you'll ever own. Let's put this stuff to the side. I've got some pattern paper here. I'm just going to trace that, just one, onto the page. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on the ground and I'm going to place my foot on top of this and trace around my foot and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. I just made the mark a bit darker so you can see it there. Now if you didn't have an insole to start with you would literally just place your foot onto the paper and trace around your whole foot. So I now know where my foot sits there. Um, I put my heel right up to the back. And what I want to do now is draw on here a nice sandal shape that will fit my foot, um, but also it's going to take away some of the excess that's on top of that. So there's the new line that I've drawn on. And that is my new sandal insole and sole pattern. Now you can make this any shape you like. I've had students bring this up to a nice squared off toe or make it um, pointy. It's whatever shape you want it to be, so don't feel confined by the roundness of this one. And then once you're happy with that shape, you can go ahead and cut it out. So that is my new insole pattern. I'm just going to place my foot on there and just see how it looks and if I want to make any tweaks. So I'm happy with that now. What I can do is take my two insoles, flip them over, and I can just trace my pattern directly on there. So if you had a big sheet of leather as opposed to these insoles, you would literally trace the whole thing and cut the whole thing out. Okay, then you can go ahead and cut these out as well. All right, that's also a great way to do an arm workout from home because that is tough to cut through. All right, once you have them cut out and ready to go, 
we can start thinking about placing our straps. Now you might notice that I don't have any lasts here with me for this tutorial because I'm showing you how to make sandals without lasts using your own feet. So if you are a total beginner shoemaker and you basically have no stuff yet, this is a really, really good place to start. Other thing to mention is that I have just cut out straight straps here, but you can cut out straps in all different shapes and sizes. Um, so just kind of get creative with it. One way that I like to design sandals is sort of placing them on the table and just looking at different combinations that you can do. Um, crossover style, two straps, you could do something like that. You can mix it up with different colors, different thicknesses. Just keep in mind that the more straps you add on, the more complicated the make becomes. So I'd recommend starting with something simple, get really confident with it, and then get more complicated as you go. So for this part of the video, I am going to just step my foot onto the insole like that. And I've also just got a little tool here. I've got the awl, which I'm going to use that uh, pointy bit to poke marks into the insole to position the straps. So I'm going to start by taking my straps and just placing them over the foot in the position I want. So just keep in mind you can sort of have it like that coming really far back or you can have it um, much tighter at the front there. But you can really position these however you want. You know, you could have them like this, whatever, whatever kind of sandal style you're doing. For this style, I'm going to do a crossover. And I tend to like to cover this kind of joint area here and the pinky toe. So I'm going to place a sort of something like that. And then I'm getting the inside strap to just come into my instep there because I just find it feels nice and supportive. I've got them in place and I'm pretty happy with where the straps are sitting. So I'm going to take my awl and just one at a time I'm going to poke a little dot on either side of where the strap is sitting. And I'm trying to do this around about 5 mil in from the edge of the insole. Alright, so you, you might not be able to see but my little um, marks are here and here and I've got them on the other sides as well. So once you've got those little marks put on there, I would usually take the awl or even my silver pen and just draw a line between the two dots. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where the straps need to sit now. You can see some of the lines are really long and that's where the straps are going to be going in at an angle. Okay, so next thing we want to do here is take a craft knife and we're going to cut through those um, lines, but we actually want to be cutting it at a bit of an angle so that the slit is sort of going in towards the inside or the center of the insole. So I'll cut one and then I'll show you up close. I have cut my slit so that it's kind of whoops, going at an angle in there like that. You can see it's kind of a long, long slit. The reason I do that is because when I feed the strap through, it's actually going to sort of distribute the weight of the strap a little bit deeper so we don't have like a bulgy area there. Okay, once you've done that, you can take your straps and you can push them through those slits. Okay, so my first strap is going on a bit like that, and that's how it's looking underneath. All 
All right, so my second strap has gone on like that. It's looking really good. Now all I need to do is slide my foot back in and then tighten the straps around my foot so that it's a really nice snug fit. All right, so once you've done that, you just wanna really gently slide your foot out so that nothing moves. And then we'll turn this over and using our silver pen, I'm going to draw a little box around the strap on the insole. So it should look something like that. Okay, and while I'm there, I'm just gonna take the pen and do a strip across the inside of the strap there. That's just so that if anything moves, I know that that's the point in which I wanna fold it. Okay, so we'll do the same with the rest of the straps. Where you've got some overlap like that, you can trim away some of the excess. So I'm gonna do the same on that one up there. So I've cut them like that on the inside. At this point, we want to get our glue. And I'm just gonna glue inside those boxes. And on the underside of the straps. This is how it should be looking on the inside now. And once that's had enough time to dry, you can go ahead and just stick all those straps down into their boxes. Okay, so the sandal should be looking something like this. Just give it one more double check on your foot. That's looking really good. So at this point I can flip it over and I can just reduce a bit of the bulk there with my safety beveler. If you don't have one of these you can just use a normal craft knife. So it should be looking something like that now. The whole point of doing this is just so that you don't feel any bulky bits under your foot. So really just taking those sharp edges out of the straps. All right, so we are now ready to attach our soles. So you can see the soles I had were the same size as the original insole, which means it fits everywhere else except we've got all this excess on the top here. If you were doing this from a big sheet of leather, you would use the exact same pattern that we made for our insole to cut out whatever you want to use for the sole. So you might want to use a sam uh, another piece of that exact same leather and maybe you want to build up like a little heel tip um, on the base there or you can use um, a dense EVO EVA foam which is what I'm going to be doing and that kind of acts as a bit of a slider because it's quite a bit thicker it gives you that lift off the ground so I actually don't even need to have a heel tip on here although I could put one on if I want to they're your sandals so you do you but what I'm going to do is flip them over I'm going to grab our slightly stronger glue and I'm going to glue both surfaces up right up to the edge So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just going to point out a few naughty things that I just did then. First of all, I glued over the top of my cutting mat, which um, is a big no-no. <laughs> you should always try and put down some scrap paper or something um, to keep your things clean and tidy. And secondly, I did not open the window behind me, which I now really regret because my whole living room stinks of glue <laughs> so I'm gonna give that um, you know 10 minutes to dry I'm gonna go open the window air out the place and then we are gonna stick the two together and now that I've given that a decent amount of time to dry I'll go ahead and stick the insole onto the sole starting at the heel section great and then once we've got that in place, we can go around and give the edges a really good squeeze just to seal it all down. 
Okay, so we're almost finished. We've still got this excess around the toe area there. So all I'm gonna do is take my craft knife and literally cut it away. It's really easy to sort of angle yourself and end up cutting this off at an angle, um, but you don't want to do that. So really try and make sure that you're cutting straight. So if you haven't got that quite as neat as you would like it, you can certainly go around the edge of the whole thing with the Dremel. Um, but I think that's actually really nice and smooth. I'm quite happy with that. All right, so at this point I have one finished sandal, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat all those steps on the other one and then see how they look. They are so cute! And I wasn't kidding how fast they are to make, right? All done!